Welcome to Nick Hancock's Footballing Nightmares. This is not a video for the faint-hearted. Collected here are some of the most laughingly spine-chilling, stupidly bowel-churning moments ever to have taken place on the world's football pitches. Because you see, football is very rarely a dream. Leghorn it is. Keane drives it back in, what a magnificent goal! Now that goal was a dream come true. Unless, of course, you happen to be a Derby fan. You see, sometimes football can be a nightmare. In fact, mostly it's a nightmare. And often it's so bad, it just has to be seen to be believed. Now that was quite startlingly bad. But today is going to be great because today's Saturday, it's match day and I'm off to Stoke. I've gone through all my lucky pre-match rituals, I'm wearing my lucky match jacket, I've got a lucky hangover, and my lucky mate Steve's just about to give me a lucky lift in his lucky car. Oh, hello. Yeah? Typical. Just when you think you've got everything under control, someone throws it all away. Behind you! As Brighton fans know, it's always pantomime season at the Goldstone ground. And these things don't only happen at 3rd Division Brighton. Even in the heady heights of the Danish league, keepers are ruining people's weekends. That's not a bad save. Look left. Look right. Look like a prat. Some teams make it hard work even when they're given chances on a plate. Now, Gorgon, the substitute. He's da the referee's given a penalty! Well, it looked like it was a dive, a touch of Serie A coming to feet him. It's Painter to take it. Great save! And the ball is... Oh, it's scrambled in! They think they've scored, but the referee has disallowed it, and quite rightly so. Our Premier League, of course, is the best in the world. Although sometimes it's hard to tell who's making the bigger hash of it. Defence? Or attack? Oh, top finish, Les. So now we know why Kevin Keegan spent 15 million on Alan Shearer. This keeper has modelled himself on Peter Schmeichel. He's got crap hair, a big red nose, and he comes up for corners. Only he scores. Didn't that bloke with the green hair used to be in Zig Zig Sputnik? Bangers aptly named Timothy Dalton's got everything under control. He's confident. He's Sean Connery. He's Roger Moore. He's George Lazenby. Nice finish. And he certainly taught that bottle a lesson. Especially embarrassing this for Tim, as that goal was actually scored by former Czech tennis star Hannah Manlikova. More white-hot Ulster League action here. A long through ball. The number 11's on it. He's clear. He's clear. He's clearly a twat. And the keeper said something to him, but he's missed that as well. Now this is how it should be done. Lovely skills, quick feet. Hang on, that's Dalian Atkinson. Well, he's not going to score, is he? Is he? Oh, my word, the finest moment of the man's career. And who does he get to celebrate it with him? An extra from the Sweeney with an umbrella. I know exactly how Dalian feels. You do your very best and then some idiot comes along and ruins it for you. Lucky Steve, it turns out, isn't going to the game today. No, 
Lucky Steve's going to the garden centre with his girlfriend. I mean, does he want to support a football club or does he want to build a conservatory? It's just so depressing. Oh, hey up. Result. Across the border, the Spanish League's controversial experiment to swap ball boys for ball dogs has proved unsuccessful. Oliveira's dog fixation has been getting him into trouble. For this incident, he got the yellow card and six months in quarantine. But not before biting David Platt, with dire consequences. They say there aren't enough characters in the game. Well, if they're going to dress like this, then I'm quite happy about it. Is this really any way for a Football League chairman to behave? Here, stewards offer him the chance to take over at Man City. Now this is really unique footage. This is the first time on film George Best has turned down a shag. He'd even rather play football. The nightmare nutter who's in charge of the Liverpool youth policy has clearly gone too far. Senior pro Barnes explains to this youngster that if he keeps doing his exercises, he might be as good in an England shirt as John himself was. Shouldn't really step on a youngster's dreams like that. I want my mummy. Mind you, the lad's obviously pretty quick. Here he is, keeping up with John at full pace. To be fair, Robbie Fowler's done a pretty good job since he's come into the Liverpool team. Poor kid. Well, I got to Stoke, no problem. First car, I said, Stoke, he said, yeah, brought me straight here. Trouble is, he's brought me to Stoke Poges, hasn't he? So I'm in the footballing heartland, Buckinghamshire. And worse than that, I'm at a golf club. Still, I suppose it could have been worse, couldn't it? I could have got a lift with Tony Adams. And everyone makes mistakes, I mean, especially goalkeepers. Look at Ian Walker's haircut. <laughs> Messi going in the right direction. Derby is out jumped by Primus. And we're back to Newson. He's missed it. It's gone in. Oh, Phillips has missed it. And Mark Newson, who scored Barnett's first goal, has pulled one back. Paul Gerard, who many in the know say is an England goalkeeper in the making already, the under 21 number one. And it was, uh... What's it? What has Muggleton done? He's left it. And he's gifted the game to Oldham Athletic. Just as we're giving Paul Gerrard at the other end of the field, man of the match, Carl Muggleton. Well, I don't know what of the match we have to give him. No comment. And apparently David James learnt a lot from his predecessor, Bruce Grobelar. Mind you, it must be difficult to keep your concentration, you know, when you're worrying about what your next hairstyle's going to be or if you're going to trip up on the Milan catwalk. For some players, though, loss of concentration is slightly more understandable. Because nightmare human errors can be triggered by a variety of events. Looks like the pies are ready. Actually, that fire was in fact started by Sheffield United fans trying to burn down John Pemberton's home, and this is the reason why. That's a fine ball by Reid, tailored to White. Sheeran herring into the centre, Quinn is there as well. Oh, and it's an own goal by John Pemberton. A gift for Manchester City. Well, it was a lovely ball and good vision from Peter Reid. It sets David White clear. But it looked to me like John Pemberton just gets his studs caught as it comes across here. And he just kind of stumbles over the ball. Here, 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 here. 
Ripley, Hendry, Crossley, Badley. Lonely. It was shortly after that that Mark Crossley declared himself available for Scotland. Still, things are looking up for me. I've got a lift, it's going in the right direction, and this doesn't bother me. I mean, I've been in tiny, tacky, unpleasant, dirty places before. Have you been to Vale Park? All right, mate. Alan Durban once said that if you want entertainment, you should go to a circus and not a football match. Well, obviously, he's never been to a circus then. A nightmare compromise would be the introduction of a Billy Smart Circus Championship. And here are a few players who would star in it. Fantastic defending here from the great Crapo. And here in Italy, Festa the Clown. There's something incredibly pleasing about watching Italian footballers pretending to be Andy Linegan. And here's a lesson for all young goalkeepers. Let's put in the goalkeeper and uh, oh my he's under all kinds of pressure. He's gone to great lengths to save the corner and now he's in real trouble. Ironsides. Scott crosses, they can't clear it. And Kusak scores an incredible turn of events. Well, that keeper won't forget that in a hurry. Still, things aren't going too badly for us. Slightly less of a nightmare. We've actually had time to stop for a pint, haven't we, Dave? All right. And just to make sure the keeper doesn't forget it in a hurry, here it is again. And the lesson for young keepers is, you're allowed to catch the ball. In Brazil, players are paid so poorly that some of them have to take on second jobs. This striker, for instance, has a double life as a live radio presenter. You know, it must be great to be a professional footballer, all those jokes and pranks in the dressing room. We expect that. But look how Wolves' joker in the pack, Andy Thompson, kicks the flag away in a humorous jape. Oh, the laughs they must have. Now, the FA would call this bringing the game into disrepute. I call it brilliant. That has got to be the worst bit of acting since Ali was in EastEnders. Still, things are looking up here. I told Dave about the headaches I was getting in the back, and he's put his charming Alsatian Satan in amongst the boxes and allowed me to ride up front. We've had a lovely half an hour listening to his Dooley's Greatest Hits tape. In fact, to be fair, we're getting on like a house on fire. My mistake. The nightmare continues. Now this is the sort of long ball that many people say are ruining the game. This goalkeeper obviously being one of them. Now here's a tip to keep you out of the hands of the police. If you're going to ask a goalkeeper to throw a game, make sure he doesn't take you too literally. This is the classic pub game kickoff. Throughout the country at 10.30 every Sunday morning, people are saying, have a go, Shad, he's off his line. I wonder if the Spanish have pub leagues. They certainly have football of a similar standard. I reckon they must do. This is certainly the action of a man who's been out on the piss the night before. This striker still thinks he's got a keeper to beat. Watch, they'll be quite happy to sit back on this uh, three-goal lead, but this is Halliday for Hartlepool. All alone, it's a good little run from uh, the striker. Oh, what a terrible header from Beach. There are some times you've just got to keep it tight at the back. I just hope that my defence is a little bit better than this. 
Rush for West Ham. Cotty in there trying to get the shot in. This is Entermark. Oh, what's he done? An unbelievable own goal. And Cotty has the audacity to claim that one. Entermark seems to be taken lightly, but that's a disaster. Come here. Now, you may think that was a nightmare, but this is turning into a real humdinger. First of all, Lucky Steve decides it's a good day to buy a conservatory. Then I end up in Stoke Poges. Then I'm in a van with a Dooley's fan who gets himself arrested. According to the police, it's not possible to drive around this country in a van full of nuclear waste when you haven't got any tax and you're on a provisional licence. Seems a little harsh to me, but I accepted it like a man because, you know, I respect authority figures. Unlike some people. Games are usually a nightmare for fans, and sometimes for players, they always are for referees. As a ref, you can never say the right thing. I mean, this poor fellow's given Neil Ruddock sympathy, but look what happens when he asks to borrow his Porsche. From a handful of nuts to a whole team full. Brazil versus Zaire, World Cup 74. It's bad enough having to ref teams that wantonly break the rules, but it's worse when they don't even know them. Zaire, throughout that World Cup, had a real problem with defending free kicks. And even advice from the helpful Jairzinho was respectfully declined. Here they try again against Scotland, seeing that it's a different referee. Unfortunately, Zaire had based their whole preparations on watching old editions of It's a Knockout. And their defending of free kicks was based on an ancient game of What's the Time, Mr Wolf, between Congleton and Hull. For those of you who are interested, Congleton were the winners. And now back to the Phil Rouge. Here's our old pal Oliveira again, out of quarantine now and well trained. See how he lies down on request. Let's have a look at that again. Nowhere near him. And again, nowhere near him. Good dog. Referees are of course there to protect players. Here's a player being tripped and tripped again and finally kicked over. The referee is straight on the spot. Yep, he's booked him for having the ball thrown at him. And in fact, he's going to send him off and he's quite right, we can't allow those sort of scenes on a football pitch. Quite clearly going down under a bad foul and then moaning about it. You see, what Paul Ince has forgotten is that actually being Paul Ince constitutes ungentlemanly conduct. Some referees, of course, have a slightly less conventional way of disciplining players. And that's only the beginning of the referee's backlash. Os jogadores do Uruburetama tiveram dificuldade para segurar Vila Nova, que queria mais briga. O Conselho Disciplinar da Federação Cearense vai decidir de quem é a culpa. Que ninguém se crucifique o, o, o nosso jogador, porque só coisa do, do futebol. Né? Vai, Ceará. Olha, rapaz. Pensa mais. This is a vision of the future. Military-backed referees coups throughout the world, insisting that ordinary, decent people 
get back 10 yards. If we carry on treating our referees in the way we have been doing, this is what you're going to see on your streets. Now that defies explanation, but then again, many things do. I mean, why did Man City appoint Alan Ball in the first place? And if poltergeists don't exist, then how did those televisions get broken on England's flight back from Hong Kong? And most of all, why did that bus driver insist on dropping me off on the outskirts of Stoke Poges? He should have taken a leaf out of Jason Cundy's book. Now there's a man with a good sense of direction. Good turn on it. That's unstoppable. That's extraordinary. Here's a perfectly nice corner move. Or is it? Let's hear it again with the commentary. It's Richardson with the corner. I think it's Cardiff's first. And an own goal by Shane Wesley. What was he doing? Keen. Oh, and it's run on for Giggs. The goalkeeper off the post. Giggs just smashes it straight against him. He could have picked his spot anywhere. Alex Ferguson blames the shirts. The new goalkeeper idea is one that Ipswich have been contemplating seriously. Tidied up by uh, Walk and Vaughan, not quite so tidy from Vaughan. Vaughan Forrester attempted clearance was charged down, and here's Ian Dowie. Thank you very much. Crystal Palace take the lead. We're 10 minutes of the second half gone. How do West Ham explain to Ian Dowie that they never ever sell any pictures of him in the club shop? Mind you, how do I explain why I'm suddenly back in Stoke? Well, it's my video, I can be anywhere I like. But you know, in the end, everything does have an explanation. Well, apart from Jan Mulvey's accent, obviously, and the reason for the existence of Jimmy Hill. Taxi! 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 That's the other thing that doesn't have an explanation. Why am I suddenly invisible to all taxi drivers when I need to get to the match? Oh well, let's cheer ourselves up. Let's have a look at Ian Marshall conjuring up a brilliant goal out of nothing. Now, goalkeepers of a nervous disposition may want to look away for a moment while we show the Ian Marshall goal that gave Ipswich the key to the fourth round. At home, they'll certainly fancy their chance, but they'll look to Marshall to maintain the form that has brought goals in three of the last four games. Watson. Oh, on the left foot, Marshall, the goal's open and he can't find it south all. It wasn't a difficult save. Well, I'm not going to see this with uh, almost 45 minutes to go, but is Marshall ever going to score today? The nightmare situation here is that Oldham need to win to stay up, and Gunnar Haller finds himself up front, not a position he's used to. So he composes himself and pretends he's George Weir. The irony is, they got the first part right. They made sure that Marshall got rid of the ball before shooting. They needed three points, and if this had been rugby union, they'd have got them. It was possibly that miss that made Celtic go for Di Canio of AC Milan instead of Gunnar Haller. It's Sabone now. Is this another one? It's caught wide from Di Canio. Why did he touch that though, Peter? I thought that was it going in the goal. This is fantastic work from Simone. That was beautiful football. As you see him cut inside there, Toldo stands up well. I think the ball's going in the goal. We all remember the 74 charity shield for Keegan and Bremner having three chest hairs between them. But it also featured one of the first penalty shootouts. And they have a special union, of course. Oh, it looks as though Harvey is going to take against Clements. Well, there was a Charity Shield match in which Pat Jennings scored against Alex Stepney. But that was in the normal 90 minutes and from a goal kick, from a clearance. But Clement still has to take his. That's not it. Oh, what a lovely picture. In fact, Callahan scored the winning goal, but I believe that the damage was done earlier. Look at Peter Cormack. Now that's got to put David Harvey off.
Let's see it again. That's disgusting. Here's David Hurst's Wembley nightmare. Here's Sheridan. Parks, who was prominent in the closing stages, and is again here with Worthington. Right going to the near post. Oh, it's a tap in. No! Kelly has kept it out from Hurst this time. 15 minutes till kickoff. I decided to run it. I've given up on motorised transport. I don't want to end up back in Stoke Poges. It's all right. I've got my health. <coughs> I've got my fags. I should do it easy. After all, I've done the first 100 metres in just over three minutes. The international brotherhood of supporters means that fans throughout the world know what you're talking about when you mention rubbish players. Here's Galatasaray v Roma. But you can't beat the homegrown stuff. Treble. Good glance off for Richie. He'll swing in the low cross, and it's cut out by Kelly, who doesn't clear convincingly. Back in by Todd. Still not clear. It's still not away. Ashley Bay is spooning it away. Oh, my... Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, it was Craig Mitchley who was in the box unmarked. Ashley Bay's palmed it away. Derby, his shot blocked. Hamilton can't score. Taylor, no. Watford scrambling the ball away. Can Snakers get there? And Miller to the rescue for Watford. And Mulby will be particularly pleased that his side have got themselves back in the game. Here's Omajit. Dangerous ball. Goodness me, it got stuck in his feet and he couldn't get the shot away. And now there's bodies everywhere and it looks like a ruck in the middle of Cardiff Arms Park. I bet you never realised footballers were so interested in rugby, did you? And apparently it's the same the world over. Now, Duarte to Rubia. Always looking for the short one. A couple of players offside there as Cato gets one forward. Cato again. And they can finally get away. The goalkeeper's in this half now. And that's a foul and the booking. But an amazing sight. As the Peru goalkeeper tackles foully Lato in the other side half. And the crowd don't mind the yellow card. They rather like the excitement of the occasion. This is one of my favourite clips and involves Peru again. It's not just this challenge by the keeper, but the fact that he tries to claim that the attacker's got a canister of CS gas. Obviously, in the end, justice was done. Jackson, the Chester captain, in a hurry to get the ball back. He's upset the Rochdale bench. Mick Doherty, the Rochdale manager, is most upset with Jackson, who's off. Two yellow cards, he's off. <laughs> Kevin Ratcliffe, the Chester manager, flies off the bench to remonstrate with his opposite number for getting uh, Jackson sent off. They're down to ten men. The Chester fans are unhappy. The man in the flat cap is telling them to all sit down. And it's all getting out of hand. The coach's touchline influence can make all the difference. I haven't seen a move like that since Chris Copeland did it to Stuart Graham on our school playground. But it's beautifully executed. And nobody seems all that bothered. Now this does bother me. It's bad enough having to look at Steve Grzovic's face without being asked to look at his arse. There's nothing more intimidating than the penalty shootout, especially when all the players that have gone before you have scored. And so we come back to the hero of the piece, Peter Devine of Lancaster City. The preparation seems right. He's dried his hands, that should help. 
But what he doesn't know is the nightmare's only just begun. And this is the best bit, because I'm sure he hasn't realised that this video's come out. So here's that name again, Peter Devine. But the sight that turns keepers' minds to jelly is Paraguay stopper Jose Luis Chalavere. Despite the apparent explosion in a nearby toilet roll factory, he will score. He knows it, the crowd knows it, and most of all, the keeper in goal knows it. Chilaver, preparado Navarro Montoya. Ya hizo uno de tiro libre, Chilaver. Y todas sus ganas. Pide y acomoda la barrera Navarro Montoya. Va a reacomodar Chilaver. Por ahora Boca tiene cinco. Allí acomoda Chilaver. Same game, same keeper. Se viene. Montoya. Boca uno va. Chilaver. Le toma su tiempo el zurdo. Atención Burgos, atención. Ahí va Chilaver, le entró. Gol de Paraguay. Lo hizo Chilaver de tiro libre. A los 41 minutos y medio empata el partido. Argentina, Paraguay. Sí señor, pica la pelota delante a Burgos. Qué bien le pega a Chilaver por afuera de la barrera. Sí señor. He scored that goal for Paraguay against Argentina, but this is the best of the bunch. That was a goal sent from heaven. And thankfully, I've nearly reached paradise as well. I can see the floodlights, I can nearly smell the pies, and I deserve this. Oh, I've been to hell and back, and Stoke Poges twice. The only thing that can stop me now is an act of God. Mind you, but that's what Tim Flowers thought. Right over Tim Flowers, and really, it's a goal they can scarcely believe. And Stan Collymore has got a goal that he can hardly bring himself to accept, but they all count, as they say. Well, that won't win goal of the month. But this one might. Here's the heaven-sent Eddie Yowds of Ipswich. Eddie Yards was the bin man that used to live with Stan and Hilda in Coronation Street. Yep, yeah, it is him. Some people might say that lightning never strikes twice in the same place, but when that place is Portman Road, the probability is increased. Two players, two own goals, two awful. Although, strictly speaking, it doesn't count as a nightmare if Arsenal and Lee Dixon are involved. Mind you, Dixon was a good player when he was at Stoke. People think the high winds you get at Bramall Lane are acts of God. In fact, I think it'd help if they finally built that stand. Hodges, it's a lovely touch for Blake. They can't follow it in. Schmeichel right back on the line. The final touch towards the goal came from Hodges. Well, this is unlucky. There's shades of offside there against Whitehouse. But Blake gets that well. I thought the wind was just going to take it in there. This has got nothing to do with an act of God. This is just the risk you take if you share your ground with Arthur Fowler's allotment. The good old English pro, of course, can play in any conditions. Springtime seems a long, long way away on a night as cold as this one. Thanks, Clive. That's really informative. That's really helped. Oh, look, it's snowing. That must be what he meant. 
And here's the ref changing the ball. Now the big question is who has got the orange one and uh, everyone signaling and all is revealed. The idea of the orange ball is that it's easy to pick up in the snow, unless you're Ian Walker or a commentator. Dispossessed by Wilson, I think. There are some things you actually don't want to see. We we'll have to try and uh, get a message to them to try and keep playing this little corner. The conditions have been uh, become so much worse. It's it's getting almost farcical now. Well, Rolf Fox is going to take the corner, and no, he's not. Gary Willard is calling a halt. Now the reason we showed you that last clip was because the referee played it by the book. They started off with a white ball, and when they couldn't see that anymore, they changed to an orange ball. And when they couldn't see that anymore, they had no option but to abandon the game. However, this is Linfield against Glen Torren. They've started off with an orange ball. But where do they go from there? At half time, the ball bursts and they have to take up Nordic dancing. It seems like the crowd aren't really enjoying this, but actually they're seeing more of the ball than Carlton Palmer did during his England career. Hold on, it's time for the Malmo two-step again. In a game like this, you can always claim a goal by just running away with your hands in the air. This hastily made banner sums up the crowd's feelings. In England, we're used to fans having their ashes scattered on the pitch. In Italy, they take their football that little bit more seriously and often bury their managers there. Not always when they're dead either. This unfortunate coach obviously didn't realise it's looked upon as bad form to beat Napoli, especially amongst the Mafia boys. Bizarre. But not as bizarre as bees in the goal. A local rentacle man has assessed the situation and decided that the best course of action is to get a mad bloke to wave a scarf at them. These days, though, all the big Italian clubs retain their own beekeeper. Leeds versus Southampton at Elland Road, and a bit of trouble with the pipes. Leeds have spent a fortune this season on Lee Sharp, Lee Bowyer, and an emergency plumber. Well, it was a bank holiday. And a note here to the directors of Yorkshire Water. There's some. Por ali o Richard. Todo o time do Goiás no campo de ataque. Olha o Evandro. Tentou meter um chapéu ali na área. Ele marcou pênalti. Marcou pênalti o Antônio Pereira da Silva. Vamos ver no detalhe se houve o toque. Olha o Evandro. Ele vai pegar, vai tentar o chapéu. Vai para a cobrança, deu a batida! Gol! And here's the solution to the Yorkshire water problem. Obviously, somebody's put a washer on wrong somewhere, and it's all come up in Brazil. 
Well, either that or they've got Moby Dick under the pitch. And I love this. Footballers will find anything to fight about. I mean, what are they saying? You pointed that sprinkler at me. Still, stranger things happen in Carlisle. Aspinall, looking for Thomas. And there's a mistake by Bradford. This is David Reeves charging on goal. Reeves scores! Nine minutes we've played. The defensive mistake by Bradford City. Who's there to take full advantage of it? David Reeves, the Carlisle United captain. His sixth goal of the season. Of course, if Carlisle was in South America. Looking for Thomas. And there's a mistake by Bradford. This is David Reeves. We've done it. Easy. Five minutes to spare. I can go and buy an inedible pie now. I'll even have just about enough time to be treated for botulism before kickoff. It's going to be fantastic. The only disappointment is it's a bit of a poor turnout. Obviously, these are the people to blame. Television. Every time there's a live game on, people just don't turn up. I mean, I know things have to change. That happens in football. The whole game's changed. But why can't they change so we're top of the Premier League with a 10-point lead, for instance? Or so that football was always played like this. And bear in mind, this is a goalkeeper. On his line, great control from George Ware. A goal! Oh! David Beckham meets your heart out. But as George knows, football isn't always like that. It's usually like this. It's usually a nightmare. Stewart, in the middle, too high for him. Oh, well, it is his own net! Were you at Doncaster Scarborough? Did you see this? And finally, hats off once again to Peter Devine. That's Peter Devine. Peter Devine. We've been through a lot together. We've suffered all the lows and lowers that the game has to offer. Yes, isn't it typical of this beautiful game of football of ours that the day should begin with such excitement and anticipation and end up a complete and utter nightmare? And here is the icing on the cake, something that's never even happened to me before. They've changed the kickoff time, haven't they? To 3 a.m. tomorrow morning to accommodate satellite television in Tonga. And the worst thing is, you know what a three o'clock kickoff means? We've got to miss God's gift. Well, finance rules. We can't afford to pay the cameraman to work all night, so it looks like that's the end of the video. Still, I'm not downhearted. Things could be worse. I could share a flat with David Meller. See ya. <laughs>